Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. Let's stand up together this morning. As we enter into God's presence together, we know that no matter where we've been or where we are, God's love is here for us. So let's lift up our voices this morning and sing. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power. build your kingdom here in this place on this earth and we are so thankful for the love and grace that you give us every day for the love of Jesus that reaches into our lives that beautiful name
may be seated. Good morning, Chapel Hill. Welcome. Wow, I tell you, the 11 o'clock crowd as of late has had more energy, so thank you for bringing it this morning. What a blessing it is to be together, and those joining us from live stream and beyond, we're so thankful that you're with us, even though you're millions of miles apart, perhaps. We're thankful. So, welcome. This is Pentecost Sunday. That's why we are dressed up. Now, if I had a suit coat like the Reverend Dr. James Brian Smith, I wouldn't be wearing this robe because that's a great Pentecost suit coat, isn't it? I mean, it's on fire. That's amazing. So thank you for wearing that today. And we're trying to communicate in every way possible that this is a special day because generally speaking in history, we have forgotten that this is one of the big three, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecosts. So in church history, you may know this, they would cut holes in the roof and make permanent holes with permanent caps, and on Easter, or Easter, Pentecost, they would send forth a whole bunch of doves and let them fly around, and if people weren't moved in the spirit, those doves automatically dropped a deposit on the person's head, and it got them moving one way or another. True in history. So, we are so blessed to have you here, and we're so blessed to have as a part of our staff, Allison Roth. She's going to come now and share an announcement about Vacation Bible School. Let's give Allison a hand, shall we? Thank you. Yes, it is that time of year. We are prepping, getting ready for Vacation Bible School 2021. It will be July 19th through 23rd. Normally it's in June. We're scooting it back a little bit, hoping that most people will be able to be vaccinated at that point and stay healthy. Um, we are limiting attendance to 200 kids this year. In past years, we've had 425 registered, so it's going to look a lot different. Um, we're making a lot of adaptations to keep it safe for everyone, but we are super excited, and we are in need of about 20 more leaders, and I need to get these leaders probably in the next week. So this is my annual ask for the congregation to come help out, give a day, two days, a week if you can. Um, it's from 8 a.m. to noon for our leaders, 9 a.m. to noon for the kids, and we just need to fill those spots so that we can open our registration after Memorial Day for the public. So if you um, have a granddaughter or a daughter who, or a grandson or a son who is 16 or older and also might be interested in helping out this year, they are eligible. If you are a mom and you have young kids and you're worried about child care, um, we offer free child care for our leaders um, with kids three and under, and then their children four and above can participate. Also new change this year is we're allowing sixth graders to participate um, as VBS attendees because they missed out last year due to COVID. So we'll have a fourth through sixth grade group. So if you have a sixth grader that would like to come and participate since they missed out last year, and these are rising sixth graders, um, we would love to have them, and we would love to have you help out. So we really, really need it. Um, we have it on our website under events. So if you go to chwichita.org, um, it's the very first event down there. You can click, and the link is right there for you to register. If you have any questions, you can always email me. So, so if we have some helpers, how are you going to know it? I'm going to know by that registration link. So if you click on that link online, I get an email. So I know right away. Even if I'm a helper with no kids? Yes. Awesome. The link is only for leaders right now. We will oh. open the link up to, if you have children and you're a leader, oh, this is another good thing. Thank you for reminding me. If you are a leader, you'll get, fill out your form, and when you complete that form, you'll get another email that says, has a link for you to fill out your child's registration. So since there's only 200 spots, they're limited, and so we want our leaders to get their kids registered first before we open up awesome. Memorial. So we have... We've already got, I think, 40 of the 200 are filled by leaders' children. Wonderful. So if you want your kids to come, email me and help out. It'd be great. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. <clears throat> we appreciate you. You deserve another round of applause. We're grateful. <clears throat> well, a special word of welcome to our guests among us. I know we have guests here this morning, and we have guests watching us via the live stream. I want you to know that this 
table of the Lord is very symbolic because it reflects our mission, that all are welcome. So regardless of a church that you may have attended or to which you belong, you are welcome at this table. Dr. James Brian Smith will give directions about how to take communion later in the service. I've had several people ask me, why are we not taking an offering? Is it because we don't need money? No, that's not the reason. We're just trying to ease into some of these new practices, having been off a year, and so that's why we have offering boxes, and they're at the doors, and thank you for your generosity, and we are so grateful for all that you're doing to support this church in prayer and in your giving. So I want to remind you tomorrow evening at 6.30, we have a special event with the Kansas Highway Patrol. Trooper Chad Crittenden will be here. He is phenomenal. He is, in my humble opinion, the best presenter on how to prepare for an active shooter. And so if this is a topic that is of interest to you, I hope that you will come for this hour-long presentation because you may know this. If you don't, I want you to know, by virtue of our location, the police department has told us we are particularly vulnerable. And so we want to be prepared. And that's why we give thanks to God for the officers that are present every Sunday. If you haven't met Officer Thornton and Sergeant Brower, I hope that you will meet them after this service and express hospitality to them. Marilyn Small has done a fantastic job of working with the police and with our own security team, and she's leading up this event tomorrow night. So all are welcome, 6.30 tomorrow evening. Well, let's pray, shall we? In the stillness of this moment, O oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and that your Holy Spirit will come in ways that inspire and encourage and strengthen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Breathe on us in ways that bring us new life that we may love what you love and do what you do. Breathe on us, breath of God, and bring healing and hope to our world, especially in the Middle East. Breathe on the city of Jerusalem as we pray for peace. Breathe on our congregation, breath of God. Inspire us and instruct us in your ways. Breathe on us until our hearts are pure, until our will is one with yours to do and to endure and not ever give up, no matter how challenging the times. Breathe on us, breath of God. Breathe on the people of this church in need of your healing grace, your comforting and gentle care. We especially remember today E.A. Ferris, Betty Wiles, Todd St. Louis, Christy White, Thomas Dulcey, Dr. Ben Staley and his wife Denise, Pastor Jerry Vogt, Colton Hurt, Stephanie Elliott and Owen Hoy, and many, many confidential concerns. Breathe on them, breath of God, in ways that would remind them that you're with them and for them. Breathe on us now in our own time with you in silence as we bring to you the concerns of our lives. Spirit of God, powerful and unpredictable as the wind, come upon us as we continue to worship and adore you. Become the driving force in our lives. Sweep us off, our, off of our feet so that we may find ourselves doing what we thought was impossible. Come, Holy Spirit, for we offer this prayer in the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Now our hymn of the day is, Lord, listen to your children praying. We're going to play and pray, I guess. I almost said play. So we're going to pray and we're going to play in this way, that this is an invitation on Pentecost Sunday to get out of your comfort zone. So I want to invite you to stand as you're able, and let's be a little Pentecostal as we sing this song, shall we?
Now here, the birth of the church, the body of Christ on earth, from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in a place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowds gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are these not all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Aleomites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered. They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pentecost, the disciples of the Lord were in one. 
felt like dancing my way to the pulpit. That, woo, that was some fire. Well, when I sat down to write my sermon for this Sunday, I was excited. I, I couldn't wait to talk about the Holy Spirit. So I had, I had done lots of research. I had um, done lots of study, lots of prayer in the weeks leading up. And I had it all worked out. I had this great plan, three nice, neat sections, one main point. Okay, Holy Spirit, I got you all figured out. Now let's get you on the page. That was the plan. <laughs> but then I found myself sitting and staring at a blank page and getting progressively frustrated. Like, okay, what's the matter here? I had failed to realize the irony in what I was doing, because here's a little secret that's not so secret. You can't organize the Holy Spirit. You can't explain the Holy Spirit and make it fit within a nice, neat 15, 20-minute sermon. It just doesn't work that way. But I threw that plan away. And I want to spend some time with you today thinking about that, thinking about the big picture of the Holy Spirit. We, we tend to ponder the comfortable aspects of the Spirit that we, that we can understand. The Spirit is comforter. The Spirit is guide. But the Spirit is so much bigger. There is so much mystery and, and wildness there. So I want to look at that big picture. Our, uh, our story in Acts um, took place in the midst of the festival of Shavuot, or Pentecost. We sometimes think that Christians invented Pentecost, but Jews actually celebrate a festival called Pentecost, or Shavuot. Shavuot. That is a bit of a tongue twister. And it's a festival that celebrates the giving of the Torah, the law, and also the harvest. So it's this joyous time where the Jews celebrate that the freedom that they gained in the Passover is brought to completion in the giving of the law. Now, at the time of our story, it was also a pilgrim festival, meaning that um, Jews were encouraged to travel to the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate. So Jerusalem was crowded. <laughs> there was lots of diversity, lots of people from all over, lots of languages being spoken. And it was this moment that the Holy Spirit chose to blow up the world for the disciples, and by extension, for us. Now, I, I choose that language, blow up, on purpose, because this, this isn't a nice, serene spirit kind of tapping on their hearts, saying, hey, guys. The spirit does move that way sometimes, but not here. <laughs> Acts 2.2 says, and suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Now you can also translate that word violent with strong, mighty, roaring. I like violent because it's the least comfortable translation, to be honest. It, it kind of makes me go, hmm, I don't know. Now, we live in Kansas right? Yeah, so you're chuckling because you know where I'm going. So did first service. We know about violent winds here, right? So picture 
the worst windstorm you've ever been in in your life. All right? Hold that in your mind while we think about the story in Acts. And I want you to do that because sometimes I think that we have heard and read this story so often that we just kind of breeze right through it. You see what I did there? Breeze. Kind of got a spoon feed you. Breeze. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And I don't want us to do that. Because think about the disciples who were living it for the first time. This, this violent wind barrels into the room, fills the room, blows up everything they thought they knew. And, and then tongues as of fire appear and rest on each of them. And then, as if all that isn't crazy enough, they started to speak. And they were speaking in languages they didn't even know. Their voices were inspired by this wild, uncontrollable spirit. Now, remember I said Jerusalem was crowded. So outside that house, throngs of people are just kind of, you know, bebopping along, doing whatever they were doing. And suddenly they hear all these languages pouring out of the windows, and they hear their own languages spoken in a place they wouldn't have expected to hear that. What would you have thought if you were part of that crowd? Acts tells us that they were amazed and perplexed. Now, this is strong language in the Greek. So this is not like, oh, I wonder what's going on in there. No, this was like, holy cow, this is weird. Some in the crowd started to say, I think they've been drinking in that house. Peter, I love Peter. Peter gets up and he says to the crowd, no, 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 it's far too early to be drunk. That's a paraphrase, but. And then he goes on to quote from the prophet Joel. And the passage that he chooses to share is itself a, a world-shattering passage. I mean, it's, it's blowing standard assumptions out of the water. Because Joel says that God promises to send the Holy Spirit upon men and women. Upon free and slaves. That all who call upon the name of God will be saved. In other words, Peter sharing this particular passage at this particular moment, he's saying what God's Spirit is doing in this chaos is amazing. And we are all invited to participate, whoever we are and wherever we come from. The question is, will we dare? Will we dare to say yes? Now let's, let's not answer too quickly. Let's think for a moment about what exactly we're getting ourselves into when we say yes again. Because even though I can't explain the Holy Spirit to you, there are some things that I can tell you. I can tell you that the word that's translated as spirit, in Hebrew, it's ruach, and in Greek, it's pneuma. It can also be translated as wind or breath. Breath is my favorite because it reminds me of the creation 
story. When we are created out of dust, God's breath, God's Holy Spirit enlivens us. So in some sense, whether we know it or not, the holy breath dwells in each of us. The holy breath, the Holy Spirit is intimate and essential and life-giving for all of us. Now, I don't know about you, but that really messes with me because it means that even the people who drive me the most bananas in this world are enlivened by the same Holy Spirit. I can also tell you that the Holy Spirit loves to guide us when we allow it. I, I can't tell you how many times in my life I have felt this little nudge to say something or to go somewhere or to stay somewhere. I know you've had similar experiences. One of my favorite examples, I was a brand new hospice chaplain and I had a patient that went to the hospital and he was stable, he was doing okay. And I had a very busy day that day. So I decided, I made this plan. You see a pattern with plans, don't you? I made this plan. I would go see all of my other people that I needed to that day, and then I would go to the hospital at the end of the day and see him. It was a great plan. But there was this little nudge that was, quite frankly, very annoying, that, that kept insisting that I needed to go to the hospital first. It didn't make any sense. But I finally said, okay, whatever, I'll go to the hospital first. I, I walked into his hospital room just a few seconds before he took his last breath. And I was able to be there with his daughter, who otherwise would have been alone. I firmly believe that was the Holy Spirit at work in that situation. I can also tell you that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, carrying our prayers. There have been times in my life and in my ministry that I have I have sat with people, I have been that person at the worst moment, that, that unsurvivable moment when words, they just don't cut it. And I have felt the Holy Spirit lifting our tears as prayers, giving us just enough grace to keep breathing. I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is present wherever diversity is cherished, even when it's hard. That the Holy Spirit is present when we reach out to those who are different from us. See, I don't think it was an accident that the Holy Spirit chose to blow up the world on Shavuot when there was diversity everywhere. It matters. And I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is not easy or predictable. This is not the comfortable path. That uh, the Spirit likes to push us beyond our comfort zone. We all have a comfort zone, don't we? It's not just me. And the Holy Spirit likes to push us. Our story in Acts shows us that. Our faith history shows us countless saints who knew that. My own life shows me that. This stole that I'm wearing today was first put upon me when I was ordained. <laughs> every time I look at it, every time I wear it, it reminds me what a ridiculously wild hard but blessed journey this has been. When we 
commit ourselves to the Spirit. It will be hard, but we will not be alone. But here is the most important thing I can tell you about the Holy Spirit. Life in the Spirit is never going to be easy, but you know what? It's the only way for abundant life. For Zoe! Right? Yes! Did I get it? Okay. I got a thumbs up. I was practicing at home so that I wouldn't get Jeff jumping up saying, oh, nope, didn't. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the only way to abundant life. And I promise you, you will never regret throwing open your arms and embracing that violent wind that comes blowing in. The disciples didn't. The Spirit blew apart their world. It took them places they had never imagined. It broke them in ways they couldn't believe, and it healed them in ways they couldn't stop talking about. And because they dared, we're here. So now we're back to that question. Will we dare to say yes? The Holy Spirit won't force us. We can say no, but oh, I hope we don't. I hope and I pray and I trust that we as individuals and we as a congregation will embrace that abundant life of the Spirit. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to blow up our world one more time. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to be wild among us to break down barriers and boundaries and preconceived ideas. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see each other, no matter how different, as enlivened by that same Holy Spirit. And let us dare to embrace the Holy Spirit's Zoe, life. Let it be so, my friends. I'm going to invite us to take a few moments of silent reflection. On the back of your bulletin and on the screen, there will be a prayer. And as you are ready, I invite you to make it your own. Amen and amen. Well, we'll be having a communion as we have in the past by method of intinction. You'll come forward, receive the waf wafer, and dip it into the cup. There'll be <clears throat> uh, three sections up front. If you're in the back, just go into the section uh, connected to where you are. Uh, and to my right, your left, will be a gluten-free station. 
If you're not yet comfortable coming forward and taking by intinction, we still do have the, the little cups and wafers. You can come and just get that in the first service. Some people just walked by and grabbed that and nodded and I blessed them and you can go back to your chair and take communion uh, your way if that's where you are today. Uh, if you're also not comfortable coming forward right now, you can signal someone at the stations and we can come to you. So that is the plan for today, how we're doing it. Please join me now in the prayer known as the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, and Abba of all. And so with the angels and all the company of heaven, we forever sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this sacred meal. We ask, O oh God, that you would make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ. And so we remember, Lord, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, this is, and drink from this. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly Glory, God, is what our hearts long. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your Become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware. give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, empower us to be your witnesses of mercy, grace, and love in this world until that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Are you filled to overflowing? I pray so. Stand to receive the benediction, please. May the Holy Spirit make us aware every time we breathe in and we breathe out that we are loved, we are held, we are renewed, and we are needed. Go in that spirit, that wild spirit, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go with the wind.